阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening, brothers and sisters、uh, of everywhere,、uh, Dharma and you know by any means. So thank you for coming to this、um, session. Today we will continue with the Tai Sangha Yin Pian, the Treatise on Response and Retributions,、uh, section three. Where it talks about transgressions、uh, in general, and then this section is about transgression by people with authority. So last week we talk about last fortnight we talk about、uh, you know how not to commit the crimes、uh, when people are in your care, and how important sages is in relation to our ability. To live a happy life because they give us a, a pathway, a way out that is not、uh, bent on self-destruction or destruction of others.、Uh, the way out that is、uh, require patience, but yield huge benefits in terms of how we、uh, can truly have an everlasting、uh, happiness, benefits spiritually, materially, and mentally. So this is importance of sages. So to do that is. A、uh, very、uh, big transgression against yourself and others, and the consequences is measured based on how wide the of、uh, how wide how influential how how、um, influential this sage or teacher、uh, is. If he is very or she is very influential towards that area, people who you know might、uh, turn to be a better person because of their teaching. And you, in high power, high authority, you know, remove this person just because of selfishness or you know self-interest or jealousy, etc., etc. Those unwholesome th- thinking, then the consequences will be you are owing the whole area people a、uh, path to enlightenment, and hence you need to pay back.、Uh, so this this is why it's very important to be aware of the consequences, and not just now but also. Uh, beyond what you can see,、um, so I don't want to dwell on here because we already talked about this. This is the、uh, Twitter post shared by、um, Jenny on the、uh, you know, horrors of war and how why we should be more compassionate towards each other.、Uh, so last week we also talked about the abuse and exploit、uh, towards people who are disadvantaged, and it was. Uh, there are a wide range of people who are disadvantaged, but it was mostly represented by widows and orphans in this、uh, sentence. It can go beyond that. You know, anyone who are disadvantaged, if you abuse and exploit them,、uh, usually people in high authority or people in advantageous position will do that.、Uh, will 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 have the chance to commit this transgression. Sorry, I shouldn't say will do that. No. Will have a chance to commit this kind of transgression more than people who are, you know, just in normal daily life. So, so that's why they want to mention it here. Just be aware, you know, when you're already in、uh, power or influential positions or wealthy or anything, do not、um, how to say, be more carey and sensitive,、uh, taking care after these people instead of、um, taking advantage of them, their misfortune.、Uh, Just because of your own desire or your own,、um, you know, ignorance. So the second one is the briberies. Well, that you know twisted the whole course of justice. Something that is publicly supposed to be, you know, trialed and supposed to be going through due process. To be fair, you know, because you, you know, people, you're in a position of judge, or you're in position of influencing the court, the decision. Then you might pervert it towards your own means, your own ends.、Uh, you know, maybe you you get a cut, a, a thick、uh, amount of money, a, a, a very thick cut out of these proceedings if you won stuff like that. So,、um, 
this is also another uh, transgression easily committed by people with power, with authority. You know, if you have no authority, you 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 can't. You know, right? It's hard. You're just going to get arrested by police. But if you're in the inside the system and you know you use that system to your own advantage, uh, that at the expense of everyone else, then this is at the expense of the public or the expense of the justice. Then you know. Uh, the consequences is also uh, need to be bare uh, later. You're not just being caught, you know, put to light, but also um, the harm that you have done towards people who are wronged or who are unfairly judged uh, will be turned back to you and your descendants. Uh, if we do not believe in next life, at least you you understand that if there is someone you like, someone you love, the consequences will touch them. Uh, there's no way out of it. So you reap what you sow. Right. Everyone has their own family and, you know, uh, f- friends and all that. If, you know, because of person in high authority misuse their power and authority to cause a lot of harm, you know, either by death sentence or by any uh, un- un- unfair sentences, uh, cause them many years of their life, etc., etc., this kind of karma will come back t- to people who committed it. That's it. And now today we're talking about the um, right and wrong and the, the, the arbitrariness of it. The whole point is this, this, this quote, let's have a look. Um, it was translated into the context of legal um, judgment, uh, legal arguments, right? But this can be broader than that. But I understand why we use this um, example because it's easier to explain. You know, what is supposed to be common sense, supposed to be right, was perverted into something that is not because of self-interest in it and what is supposed to be wrong has been twisted into something that you know sounds uh, good uh, acceptable so basically you know flip around the whole um, course of um, the, the, the value and then the standard uh, upside down so in in the context of law it's like criminalize something that are supposed to be you know Encourage towards everyone, and also, or, or they are not wrong or trivial. Um, and then the other hand, you how to say decriminalize or you uh, uh, encourage the behaviors that were supposedly, you know, immoral or supposedly um, um, how to say, more harmful towards society. So, basically, uh, this goes back to the uh, moral judgment in a sense: what is right, what is wrong. Uh, it's a very tricky way, tricky um, uh, topic to talk about um, because uh, who who decides what is right and what is wrong, and how do we use this kind of standard in our daily life, right? Not just on the legal side, but also on the way we do things, the way we think. So in the um, uh, uh, in the explanation or, or commentary, um, Master Jinko also bring up. Uh, in the context of law, when a court case was proceeding, uh, both side prosecutions and the defendants, um, you know, there are a lot of things that are not clear. You know, the the the, the how to say the the line is not clear. The line of um, thought is not clear because there are so many unknowns. So, and any decision made in these court proceedings will affect people's life and death. So it's a very severe, very um, important matters to take it seriously because you affect people's life. Um, and if it's a policy, you affect many people's life. So, you know, in another way, people's life were decided by your words. That's how it works, you know, court case and dictation. Uh, there's a system around it, but in the end of the day, you know, you pass the sentence and that sentence will be carried out accordingly. And if that was done in the wrong way, whether negligence or malicious intent, then the the consequences these people are going to get affected. So, he, this commentary says there are many cases where people uh, uh, were judged unfairly or, you know, those people who were supposed to be punished were let off free or maybe they got bail with a low amount or amount they, they can far, you know, they can afford. 
say you own 10 billion assets and you are um, you know people in high position wealth you know a lot of not a lot most um some you know might have no restraint at all when in the high position in the position of power like this and they commit some crimes maybe you know manslaughter by driving recklessly and stuff and and he was caught and then in the court they're just like okay you can bail out for one million so what's one million for people with 10 billions stuff like that um obviously it, ha- um, it has to do with system as well you know the, the society value so without going too too scattered in our topic i'm just want to focus on these two words right and wrong and 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 this one is talking about straightening it straightening out uh, what is right and what is wrong uh, so that it does not get muddy and confusing and I will further extend this discussion around um, what do we call silver linings or gray areas. Um, does it really mean that it's very confusing, supposed to be confusing and muddy? Or it just means that the nature of these kind of, you know, judgments are always arbitrary. Hence, you can't just draw a ruler and say, this is right, this is wrong. Some Some are very obvious. Some are uh, required careful thinking, hence gray area. Uh, and Leo Fan, since we all we came a long way from Leo Fan days, and to here, uh, if we read back the Leo Fan books, you will mention about this as well. How do we discern right from wrong? Uh, in this case, this is deliberately mixed up and you know twisted. All right, why? Why was it deliberately twisted? All right. This is in the context of people in power. All right. So, obviously, they are influential in laws. So, now, if there are things they were judged unfairly or people who are supposed to be punished accordingly were let off too easily, either it's because of corruption or just being biased, prejudice. All right. You've seen a lot of that in in the bit earlier days, you know, especially in the colonial days or in the in that society with class, very strong class mindset. Oh, you dress well and all that, you know. You must be a well, well, well eloquent gentleman. You would not commit this crime. It takes a lot of evidence to prove that this person has faults. Instead of someone who is in the worker class, look like, you know, covered with coal and stuff like that. And then they will be like, hmm, this guy must be, you know, uh, you know, uh, flea ridden scums or something like that. And then judge them uh, harshly loosely this happens not just in china and everywhere else all right or even worse with racism as well right like this race uh, automatically assume they commit crime and 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 even though there are higher probability high 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 percentage of people who commit crime came from this ethnic group uh, it does not make it right to you know profiling them in a way that encourage that trend you like this is not how just this system is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to educate people about consequences of doing wrong, like what they are, what this session is about, like educate consequences of committing this, not just legally, not just outside uh, outside intervention, but actual consequences that comes to you, all right, beyond this. Uh, that's the that's, this is the value. That's this is the value of the lesson uh, that we are all learning now so that it can be a powerful motivation to self-restraint. So going back to the point, all right, I'm just trying to wrap, unwrap it slowly. Um, uh, so in the context of legal, so there's only either corruption or bias or negligence, three reasons, all right? Corruption, obviously you already have a conflict of interest. You know, you have your own stake in this case. You want it to win so that you can get a good cut or you have investment in this uh, company, you don't want them to fall. So this, these are already like clear in the guideline. If you have anything, interest in that, you should be clear about it. Corruption can go many ways. One way is just, you know, transfer 3 million in your account, which is, you know, direct, very direct. Or some is, uh, you know, giving you some gift vouchers and stuff like that. Uh, and say, hey, um, you know, if you help me this, you know, win this case or you know if you help me to pass through this um, policy stuff like that you know allowing uh, say conglomerates in mining or oil stuff like that they're trying to you know push that uh, 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 
policy forward so that they can get more permits uh, to open up at the expense of uh, environment stuff like that you know um, and then I'll you know somehow offshore account in Bahamas uh, something will come into your account or when you travel there uh, there will be a nice package uh, waiting for you uh, in terms of luxury hotels those are briberies it comes in many ways I haven't gone into financial crime but if I do I can tell you a lot more <laughs> so um, <clears throat> this is one thing uh, corruption the other one is bias you know prejudice which is what I just mentioned racial profiling which is very relevant to nowadays or in uh, or classist thinking like this person you know looks like um you know, very run down and did not, not maintained properly in his attire or her attire. So it must be, you know, prone to crime. And and this person wears very, you know, slick suit and all that uh, and must be, a, you know, well-behaved person. Not really. Not necessary. All right. Think of that in context of what Leo Fan say. Um, someone who appear polite, appear, um, uh, appear very, uh, how to say, eloquent and all of that uh, does not necessarily mean they are uh, really uh, kind at heart all right someone who were a bit harsh with words um, but maybe you know they just say it as it is uh, all right maybe a bit slow on picking up the situations and the word came out without filter but uh, you know depends right what they say what they're trying to say uh, it's not necessarily means they're a bad person so these are something we need to be really, how to say, practiced. Because our mind immediately goes towards the words that we like to hear, sight they would like to see, sensation we like to touch, food they would like to taste, all right? Uh, thoughts that we like to think. Naturally, right? It's natural, in a sense, the habit. So we need to like hold back. Otherwise, we'll commit this problem. Uh, confusing the right and wrong. All right? So last one is negligence, basically lazy. You're supposed to do 10 times check, but you only do twice just to get on with the day. All right. So this cutting corners, uh, especially in legal context, it's not right. You know, you're supposed to check thoroughly about this. You know, maybe this person was not there at the time of crime. You need to make sure that this person has a clear, clean alibi that are, you know, given by a uh, a non-biased source, you know, not the not not being buy out. To so be very thorough in every corners as you can, uh, so that you know you can make a right judgment with the right information. So that's the third one. So these three problems is the cause of, you know, in the cause of justice being issued inappropriately. Either the punishment comes too light, or the punishment falls on someone too heavy, or the punishment falls on the wrong person. All right, because of bias. So, people in high authority um, have that risk and need to be aware of the risk. Um, nowadays, and from ancient times to now, it's still happening. Okay, these mistakes happen, and and um, without any wisdom, it's very hard to find out what is actually right, what is actually wrong. All right, like Leo Fan say, right? Like what appears to be like that does not mean you know, it's more than more than you mean. More than it meets the eye, you know, it's not, it's not um, what it seems, um, because uh, sometimes you need to understand the motivation and all that. So you need to be very uh, careful and diligent in investigating it. So yeah, <clears throat> so the whole point of this is to get to the principle, get to the operating principle of how to use, um, how to how to say, how to how to align yourself with the. Uh, how to how to grab uh, what is right and what is wrong? How to understand what is right and what is wrong? How to discern right from wrong? This is a skill. It's very important in your career, in your life, every part of your life. Um, especially if you're in charge of people, taking care of a group of people. Sometimes, so what can we use? What metric can we use to help us to avoid these mistakes? Um, confusing right from wrong and wrong from right first thing is how many people are affected by it how many how big it is you know is this case you know not just if we, we start from legal and then we extend to your decision maybe in your 
you know company or in your communities or in yourself um, is this decision affecting uh, a lot of people right how many people affected and then the other factor is time how far this reach how far will these consequences reach all right how far reaching is it all right something you cannot see now but it will come you know the due payment will come soon or the due payment will come in 10 years 15 years these are very obvious in terms of um, you know, environmental in the sense you know the the um, the needs of now and the needs of later you know how to balance it now we need to be more sophisticated now we cannot still stuck in 18th century mindset you know the world is our taking we can just dig and waste resources like that um, now we need to think about the real consequences we can say climate change we can say um, you know the, the the sterilization of farmlands the farmlands that were overdone with monocrops fertilizer pesticides they are overused oversaturated and they were not crossed planting enough the the the, the soy nutrient was uh, very singular like they only suck up that part of the nutrient and it dries up the land and all that so this is this this is one thing that is obvious everyone can talk about um, so how far it reaches or you know something more close to us like when we make a decision to buy a clothes or to buy things um, you know right now I really want it but do I really want it in long run you know you can apply it on yourself right from wrong right um, and it's actually quite hard on yourself because you can't see it uh, clearly it's very close right and 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 sometimes you 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 have that strong desire to just pursue it uh, buy it or whatever and when you actually bought it you would be like uh, yeah I like this I like this and then after one two months it becomes obsolete so all the money that you could have used for you know maybe accumulating more merits by donating it to the uh, actual communities that needs it either the temple or the charities now is wasted on something some materials stuff that you don't need so that's something I need to ask myself as well <laughs> so yes so, so this is the metric you can use right what is what is the benefit in the long run like and how many people were benefited by it so space and time basically these are the two metrics we can use and it's very easy to understand okay uh, and people who can keep this practice of you know understanding assessing things based on these metrics if they do it very well uh, and apply it very well they become sage all right normal people fun fool like us um, you know sometimes now people will clouded by you know clouded by desires clouded by uh, uh, sensory uh, excitement and that, that sometimes they override it and even though our mind keeps saying yeah I shouldn't do this I shouldn't do that but the actual impulse and act the more I see, <laughs> just look, look at myself okay the, the impulse uh, you know is there overriding your actual um, conscious side of you and then you just do it uh, knowing that it's not right you still do it that kind of problem so consequences is you know small consequences you you could have used the fund save up for a home and now you used it on something useless or the big consequences is um, you know not able to control desires ruins relationships you know, extramarital affairs all right those are very obvious having an affair with someone outside marriage or having an affair with someone before you guys reach the stage you know where you guys are comfortable and the consequences is emotional damage uh, on yourself and on on others on your family as well or you know even worse break up your own family break up other people's family or uh, your own children have a worst uh, uh, environment to grow up in so those consequences are affecting more people in, t in the context of family so these are something that really warrants you know distance uh, from that source of you know whatever that source of action is uh, from the source of temptation 
All right. So we can use that in daily life. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Um, and um, and if we can do that, that every action we do, all right, are more are, are tuned towards you know long long term, and then benefiting a lot of people. And and what's the result of that? We can think about that. We can talk about that. You can even bring up examples if you have met someone like that. Um, people who can think far ahead, people who can um, understand that you know the the benefits is far reaching, is wide, all right. And he starts small, uh, 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 very simple and small, but it's working towards that goal, inspiring people to work with him and her towards the goal, all right. These are usually uh, easily seen from people who are more in a religious uh, field, working in that field, because. The nature of religion is to look beyond this life, you know. And Buddhism, even though we do we do say that it is not a religion, but it was regarded as a religion. So just to follow how the world sees it, it Buddhism is also one of them. It's also seeing things beyond now, right? And then how do we go beyond? They do not neglect the now, but the now is just um, how to say part of the stepping stones for you to reach there. And and how do you utilize your current resources, your current moment? All right, it's very important. Hence, we have these lessons about karma. All right, if you know really want wealth, then practice giving, not just throwing money at people. That's very bad behavior. In future, you will get money, but the money will be thrown at you instead of handed to you respectfully. All right, attitude as well, the giving of uh, respect. Why giving of wealth, giving of respect? So this is the right thing to do, all right. A lot of people might judge it on, you know, I want to hoard the money to myself as right, but that is a twisted wheel of of, of wealth. You know, there are a very famous sto- uh, a story uh, happens in ancient times. There is someone uh, who is in the early nationalist China, Ming Guo Chu Nian. Um, he was very rich. I think it's Chai Laoshi that shares this story, Teacher Chai. So this very, very rich Mogu in early modern China, uh, Republic China, uh, has a, to approximately today he he has a net worth of billions USD in if you convert to modern times, billion you know billion of dollars, um, super rich. The issue is. Every time he's trying to, everyone like even his family uh, or, or friends or something, I think his family is trying to do some charitable work. He would scold them and say, "You know how I get rich? Money comes in but never go out." So what happened is after he died, he cut his um, well. I mean, he he divided his wealth into ten uh, portions and give it to his descendants, presumably into ten family units. You know, his children has family. And then within three years, they're all gone because they all spend it uh, without knowing how to invest and all stuff. So, so coming back to this, you know, right and wrong. So this person in the past life, he must have done a lot of right to get to that in terms of wealth, wealth financial position. But the problem is he is not aware of this value system, hence leading him to a uh, wrong perception where you know he thought you know holding money is the right thing holding money is different from saving if you save it for a certain thing like say you want to buy a house and stuff like that that's understandable but in his case uh, buying a house is not a problem he can buy five of it uh, no problem you know he can buy five of it in the central CBD in Sydney using that kind of wealth so the problem now is he has the means to give he doesn't give it all right he has very easy. He can just throw one million, no problem, and his life will still be nice. So that is the right thing to do. But he didn't do it. All right. For the people who are in the financially challenged side, because it's easier if we talk about money, they are challenged. They are already tight, but they still able to give out what they have to the people who who are more in need than him. You know. So instead of eating three meals, he can eat two meals. That person has no meals. He gives his own meal money so that that person can have one meal. 
but that is precious. So this this is how you measure merits, the the sincerity, the purity of it, the the how 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 true that person is, how loving that person is, all right, loving in the sense of you know compassionate, all right, not romantic, really really compassionate, really kind, really want to help people. So that is right. That's how you measure right, all right. Okay. So, understanding that, uh, we can apply to our life as well. You know what happened to us, um, and our value system as well. We need to re-examine. Have we put right and wrong in the wrong place? You know, and the easiest thing to see is the consequences. Like what happens to me now, or what happens to me uh, uh, recently, um, is that a result of my uh, thinking in the wrong place? You know, the way I think. You know, so <clears throat> Buddhism they always teach us this. You know, that's why we learn in Buddhism. Why? Because Buddha says, uh, "What is Buddhism? Uh, Buddhism is to understand yourself." And then understand the, the, you know, understand the world around you. World includes people, you know, yours truly, and then includes your family, your circle, social circle, your work. It's huge. Your universe, you know, the 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 the, the universe, the the realms, those are big. So from small to big, the world around you. But before that, is also yourself yourself in, and the world in relation to you as well understanding this thoroughly hence uh, you will become Buddha in the progress of understanding it the better you get you are called Bodhisattva which is a person in the progress to be a Buddha basically alright so um, understand that you you will understand what is right and what is wrong uh, it's, it's very um, it's all interconnected People who do not understand themselves and do not understand the world around them is called ordinary beings. Fan Fu. That means they were they, they, they were how to say subject to you know whatever whatever was in front of them. They just follow. You know. They got chained by their own we use the Buddhist term karmic binds, you know, but we don't want to be so technical. Chained by their own desires chained by their own uh, five senses six senses you know thoughts is also a, a form of stimuli you know so they were tied up with this and they run in circles just like a dog chasing his tail basically instead of using his brain it's just chasing his tail because it thought the tail is there and then it's right in front of it because how it works so yes that's the value of Buddhism in relation to this um, right and wrong because it informs you how do you have a right view you know right view give rise to everything that is right wrong view give rise to give rise to everything that is wrong all right it's very important in Chinese right the right understanding the right view all right um, and the right view is not just brainy part it's actually deep into your spine kind of right view that is the right view now if we just talk about moral stuff everyone can just sit there and say I shouldn't do this I shouldn't do this put them into the environment see how much they can stand obviously don't do that but what I'm saying is we can apply to ourselves if we just keep talking out of the the conscious side it's just not enough this is a start like what we're doing now but it has to be go deep into your spine kind of level in order to be called a solid right view otherwise you know we might agree with it we might respect it but we might not necessarily, you know, actually act according to it. Hence, our right view is not firm. All right. In, 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 in Final Sutra, there's also called Putinji. Uh, there's a lot of group of people. Only people who are firmly in the right view. All right. The right Samadhi. The right, um, tran- uh, the right uh, meditative tranquility. They're resting in the right place. Uh, no longer wavered can go to pure land hence the practice of chanting Amitabha there's so much context in, in just four words that's why it's so deep we need to explain it it's our job and then and then also the right view same applies to the right view because if we are if we are faltering if we waver it you know by any temptation in any form it can be lust can be anger can be uh, greed for money greed for uh, you know lust 
uh, or um, anger, aversion, anything that causes you to be angry, and you act, react to it, and then you're unable to hold it back or unable to um, recollect yourself, uh, or it takes so long to recollect yourself. Those are all measures of how far you are from the right view, and hence how far you are from enlightenment. That means how far you are from stop chasing your own tail instinctively, right? My, your brain might be saying, I shouldn't chase my own tails, but you, you still chase it anyway. It happens, right? That's why, that's why it takes practice. So this one is also, you know, what is right, what is wrong? You think they do not know? The leaguers, people in the legal system, they know they shouldn't do this, they should do this. The problem is they didn't know in depth of consequences if they actually do the wrong thing. And in, in contrast, the actual benefit in long run, if they do the right, they just want to get what they can get at the moment to enjoy whatever, right? Uh, wealth and all that, right? Applies to myself as well. So this is why we, we, we are stuck chasing the tails, this endless cycle, all right? So how do we get through this? In Buddhism, we have a first step. We call it non-ego, right? Let go of the ego, as in understanding why do we chase after this thing? first thing we, we, we need to realize that we, all we do is to, to help this body sustain itself. In the absence of the body, first you don't need the food. Second, you don't need the sleep. All right? Without these two things, and you don't need the shelter. Third, without these three things, all these real properties, all these you know, clothing or anything that are not necessary. All, right? all this farming that involves in you know, butcheries will not exist. Hence, Lao Tzu, from the Taoist, you know, the founder of Taoism, or the, the, the sage in Taoism, say, I have one very big problem. That is, I have a body. <clears throat> so in Buddhism, same thing. You need to recognize that this body is a vessel for you to, because you tie up to here. The body is a form of your uh, manifestation, of your mind, all right? Just think of it as projection. Of your mind and it, it projects in this way with this law of physics and stuff like that obviously you can't just say i don't want this anymore so you can't do that that that's gonna that's gonna make it worse for you so what what would what we think is we just need to recognize that this is a body a tool like this is a phone wait this is a phone charger anyway this is a charger all right i need the charger i want to preserve the charger so that I can charge my phone. It's a tool, all right? Obviously, just because it's a tool doesn't mean I can throw it away. Doesn't mean I should treat it badly. <clears throat> it's a tool that, because, because it is what it is. It is a tool. So this body as well, it's a, it's a form that I took in, all right? Because of, um, you know, because of my attachments to this world. Hence, I took this form with my parents, right? So, <clears throat> first we recognize the body is not me, it's mine. It's not me, it's mine. All right? And it's also not mine forever. It's only mine for, what, 100 years? Uh, how many people get 100 years? Congratulations if you do reach it, and I hope you all reach it. But if you don't, you know, at most 100 years. It's yours for 100 years. So number one, everyone in six realms, including the heavenly realm, the Brahma realm, and stuff like that, they still have attachment to body. Or from body, they have attachment to the concept of self. They still have that sort of attachment. Uh, that's why they're not liberated, no matter how highly advanced they are in their meditative practice. They're still stuck that. It's just that how much they stuck. The lower you get, the more stuck you are. All right? Human, we're stuck. You know, the body, so in, 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 in Finite Sutra, Holy moly, you can wrap out of that thing. Because this is basically Buddha telling you, you know, like no house, you worry house. No farm, you worry farm. Alright? No money, you worry money. Alright? No wife, no family, you worry about no wife, no family. And then if you already have them, you also worry about them. And then you worry about the maintenance, worry about the strata, worry about that. Such is the way the world works. Such is the way we were stuck. Stuck ourselves like that. 
right? We need them. We can't, you know, move go on like that without them. We all can say, I can just let it go off the body, but we can't because we are not, uh, we are not going to the extreme. Buddha never said that you should go to the extreme, all right? Even in aestheticism, they also take care of body and stuff as a monk, all right? Back in the original Buddhism. So, so the point is to recognize this reality. It is like that, all right? You're stuck with this body, and this body has so much demands, you know, you know, sexually, also the physically, also the mentally. So all this demand is coming in, and we all need it in order to, you know, uh, survive and stuff like that, or procreate or something like that, or just, you know, to ease off the stress. All these are our own doing in a sense. That we keep chasing that tail. <laughs> that tail that keeps spinning, never ends. Uh, knowing that all it takes is you recognize it's a tail and all you need to do is to stop chasing the tail and move on it's hard because it's wired in that way so that's what our job now to ourselves number one is to unwire it remap it all right the many ways to do it all right and they can complement each other's but you need to stick to one path of wiring so that you can get out of it and our path is to focus our mind on the name of Amitabha, Buddha. There are half people focus their mind on the loving kindness meditation. People also focus their mind on, you know, breathing meditation. Those are techniques to get you out of it. There are differences in them, obviously, based on the you know the context of the practice, but they are still aiming the same goal, liberation. Stop chasing the tail. All right. Um, so beyond the body we understand that you know all these things outside the body is needed but it's not how to say it's not forever it's not permanent it's not like something that oh, I'm gonna die well uh, yes you're gonna die without food and you know under extreme weather but you know you don't need more than what your body needs uh, uh, just to survive and how do we re how do we reduce that desire is also a homework we need to have and this affects what is right and what is wrong because what is right and what is wrong rests on uh, what we value the most all right if we stop if we re liberate we free ourselves up give ourselves more space to think you know more space to think that you know beyond survival beyond just you know procreation beyond just chasing after my desires beyond just chasing you know whatever kind of desire you pursue because this desire comes from fulfilling the body needs sometimes it's mental needs all right um, and 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 and, and there, are, there are different levels of fulfillment the higher you get the cleaner it is and and the further away you, you are from attaching to the body so start from the bodily desire to the mental desire I like to think I like to write art philosophy you know uh, uh, very thoughtful movies stuff like that and then further spiritual desire in, in the sense of you know Buddhism Buddhism is also a object of desire right but the level is heaven and earth and the re result is you get to a different level from bodily desire if you pursue 100% bodily desire there's a place called hell or second level is hungry ghost third level is animal realm fourth level is human realm alright and then the, the, the lighter you get the better it is you are in heaven in heavenly desire realm heaven and then non desire uh, form realm heaven and then the unformed realm and then if you become arahat you become more spiritually attained you are enjoying the spiritual benefit that you don't need this kind of bodily or even mentally stimulation there's no need it comes from inside so the point is like that what is right and what is wrong based on what you value the most all right as a normal person ordinary people if we were not taught in this way we can't we'll all be tied up with the society which all everyone is collectively chasing the tail together in one alignment like orchestra even you are a bit aware if you're not strong enough you'll be pulled down and you'll be like chase money chase you saw a lot of comics that reflects on that isn't it like people keep you know chasing wealth fame and all that or chasing you know they are after their desires they are mostly materialistic or very few are more reflective 
so this is why many wrong things were made and then all this po- all this society consensus that rests on materialistic or rests on this kind of you know body is me and me is body kind of mindset uh, leads to that kind of thinking you know what does body wants other than food good food all right those are more neutral safe topics uh, good house okay and then what does it want beyond that sexuality and then oh explore my sexuality and then it goes to the entire tangent of that topic why beyond all that is the body all right i'm not i'm not my i'm not making it a trivial out of it but it is what it is all right once we free ourselves of this constraint then the topic no longer so so big for us it becomes a small thing so what is right and what is wrong you can argue in that little bubble, all right? But we already have such a huge space. This bubble doesn't matter to you. All right? They can argue what they want because they're stuck in the tail chasing. I don't want to chase my tail. I want to move up, move on. So our space is bigger. So the way we see right and wrong, like what kids argue right and wrong, you you go and argue with kids about you know this color is better. This. Uh, a tall is better than a, 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 a low key stuff like that. No, right? You don't argue anymore. So what is why and what is wrong becomes uh, much more free. Um, obviously, you understand what you should not do and should do. Those are obviously there, but you get more um, able to think further. How far reaching it is? How big? How many people were affected by it? And not just this life, you know, in terms of time, any life, not just uh, this person. But what happens after next life with that person? Right? If I if I if I have a very bad dealing with this person, if I don't understand this context, I will try to go, you know, fist to fist, you know, word to word, and I try to get, you know, out of it, you know, try to get some money or something set them out of it. And then thinking that, you know, I win. But never neither do we know next life he might be your son. Or he might die because of losing the battle, suicide or something, and it was an unfair battle. He might be born as your son, and all the money you win gets back to him, and then he spend it away. Now that opens up. Oh, now you understand why you need have to be patient, why you need to be practicing kindness, to be kind to others. Ultimately, is kind to yourself. And what is right and what is wrong? All right from uh, being annoyed by people behind you in the train to, you know, understanding that, you know, power of patience brings, you know, an aura of loving kindness, an aura of tranquility around you to yourself first and then to people around you. When they come to you, they just feel peaceful and loved or calm, very calm, very kind. That's an achievement. Uh, that it takes it takes work it takes education so going back to this all right as long as we stuck in the idea of my body is me was young the idea of duality me and you everything imagine if we leave this duality in our word we can't talk at all we can't talk at all we against you all right, can't against can, talk against silence, or against none. Everything we say has to be opposite. Fun, so I don't know Chinese how to say it. 双面, 不是双面, 相对, 相对, yes, yes, yes. It has to be opposite. Uh, so what is right, what is, what, what is right, what is wrong? Uh, it's fun if you think about it. It's tasty. I mean, for the for the brain, it's tasty for the brain if you think about it. Um, and then Zhong Shenxiang, you know, the the idea of there are people, you know, as in they are them, them us. And then Shou Zixiang, you know, the, the life, long life, short life. What is long? What is short? Say if you have an exam, like Jane, you have exam right recently. Or that that assignment rushing moment felt like for, uh, felt very short. When you start, try to rush for assignment, it felt very short. When we when we sit in the boring lecture, it felt very long. 
but the hours is one hour equally. What is long, what is short. Right. So once we understand this mentally, and then now we apply and used, right? If I have I, if I use it in, 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 in this kind of value system, I like, I don't like. I think, I don't think. I I think this is this is my view, my understanding, my and I um uh it's my pride, my arrogance, my face, you know. Um, if no, if no, if Buddha didn't just sit there and tell you it's hard, it's too close, guys. It's it's not it's not like you 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 don't have it ability to be enlightened. It's just it takes so much work to 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 actually examine yourself and then understanding that how do I free myself and how to be actually happy and liberating, um, and this does not mean that you let go in a sense of you know I don't do anything anymore I don't do my work anymore I don't care that's not right that's a wrong attitude as well in Buddhism there are two things take up and let go alright let go is a wisdom take up is a courage I like the word alright take up that means we have to deal with all the burdens and responsibility with it if I take up a home loan I need to deal with my repayment plan and all that alright but I have a house and my parents can come and all that if I let go that means when time is come time is right I can get all my salary and all my benefit compensation away and move on to my next stage aestheticism monastic life if I can do that it's wisdom because I know that long run these things will go away anyway and I'm pursuing something beyond that so both are important when you need to get your leg stuck in the mud to figure out the path you need to get your leg stuck in the mud to figure out the path Right, no matter how awkward, how painful, how annoying, how, how unpleasant it is to your body, to your face, to your sense of self, to your mental, anything. Um, understand your limit, of course. Don't do it too much to yourself, but challenge. And then build up that capacity. And then when it's time is right, you can just let go. Oh, that, that, that feeling is different from just sitting there doing nothing and say, I'm letting go, letting go. That's, that's just lying to yourself. All right? No, if you go through the world, go through all the crap that it gives all the beauty that it gives This it can't be always crap crap and beauty comes together okay um, and go through that and then you come back and say I can let go that is a heavy word word with weight compared to someone who has never experienced that to say I let go I let go of course the, the difference is huge right one has the weight of the world and they can also let go um, in a way yeah. the other one is has nothing to weigh it down and, and say I let go untested and tested that's the difference All right. so give yourself a bit of chance to think in that way when you face with crap like that and it's painful it's annoying it's hateful it's troublesome acknowledge the feeling understand the feeling I myself have gone through this and I, I always say I don't like this I really don't like I have anger I have stuff like that bad face coming out and then give yourself a bit of space and reflect maybe this is what I need to go through in order to grow and then and then I have more capacity to let go to be honest the more you have the more you're able to let go and the more powerful your cultivation is it's always like washing machine that again and again again and again so this is what is right and what is wrong feels very different at this level um, yeah and the more you practice and with the right view you will be able to use it to flush away all these you know attachments you will be more able to let go because you understand that all this only brings pain in the end okay? more property more pain alright that means you have to worry about you know, rising interest rate, dropping property price, uh, rent. Who is the tenant? Uh, is my agent doing right by me? Is my agent forgetting something and then causing trouble to me in the long run? I might not see it now. I see it in five years. All right. Someone might. You know, I have a story. Someone took a photos. The agent took a photo before the rentals, and then they only took the photo. Photo means you restricted to that scene. 
they didn't take video so what happened is after the person rent my friend is a landlord uh, he finished the renting the tenant finished the renting moved out the agent came in and, and say it's fine so he didn't hold him accountable anything let the bond goes and my landlord my friend who is the landlord came in and looked at the property and she saw dirty very dirty you know the cupboard and everything is very greasy or maybe something like that or the bathroom stop clean properly but the pictures that they took they're all clean <laughs> so troubles problem comes when you own things all right uh, the pain that it gives to you all right uh, obviously it's important to have it it's it's a it's it's a next level but when it's time to let go let go uh, so if we stuck in that then we fall further into that spiral so you know it's it's all about uh, how you able to let go at the time when you need to the pure land same thing you're able to let go of the whole world the people in it you know the emotions in it the attachment to your parents attachment to your loved ones your spouse attachment to the temple attachment to this uh, you know Dharma brothers and sisters as well also this is also a, a cause of attaching you're able to let go of all of this and actually focus on Amitofo then you'll be able to go to Pionet right um, so yeah So, I want to wrap this up properly. What is right? You know, Buddha has taught us why we live such a painful life because we're stuck in that thought. You know, I heard a very wise saying, you know, I think uh, one, some of us might have heard of it. The arrow stuck in your body. Buddha has given that parable. First arrow came from nowhere, stuck, your, stuck in your body. You bleed. That is a fact. Life is suffering. Right, uh, things happen, crappy things happen. Then what you would do next, right? Two choice: pluck the arrow out, stop the bleeding. If you don't have the bleeding, keep the arrow in, get rid of the the shaft, um, and then go to a place of safety. You know, use your brain and and think whatever scenario to get yourself uh, stop bleeding and survive. Number one. Number two: who shot me? Who did this to me? Um, how dare you do you know that I have you know uh, a dating with one of those cute girls from the uh, second village uh, how dare you stuff like that or you know I have to perform in front of a, a ride in front of that village I could have got a favor in the village chiefs uh, if I do that um, you know you step yourself more ayah I lost this ayah I lost that so you step yourself many arrows I miss this uh, this guy is bad guy and then all that instead of saving yourself from the wound right that's your choice. That's our choice. And my choice is your choice. Right. We all have an arrow stuck in us. Doesn't matter. When you're born, the born the arrow of birth is given to you. Right. When you age, the arrow of age is stuck to you. Those are those are reality. Those are how it works. And then, you know, sickness, death, those things happen. Alright. Say cold weather. Cold weather is stuck in you. The arrow of cold weather is stuck in you. What do you want to do? Eh, it's so cool. Or, you know, throwing tantrum. Or just, you know, hold on to it, find a place, shelter it, done. Or sick. I'm sick, I'm coughing, I'm dying. All right? Instead of saying, why do you cough? Why do you use what? Can we turn around and say, I'm coughing. I, I think I'm dying. But I'm still coughing. And I can still think, so I can chant Amitofo. If I die, bye-bye. That's it. I don't have to worry about it. If you can think like that, then your whole life is perspective changes. So back to this one as well. All right. Um, so Buddha say going further. All right. From there is to invoke a vow to save sentient beings. All right. Fasting to wuliang wu bian zhong shen. So understand this reality of life. You know, those grind everyday grind going through 9 to 5 even not 9 to 5 being a housewife you have your own trouble as well dealing with this and that <clears throat> even you're running a business running a multi-billion dollar corporation you think they sit there and say nothing no problem haha <laughs> no the bigger they own like I say the more you own the more trouble you have 
right? And then also the people around you somehow won't be as sincere as before. That's that's under un- unfortunate because people will be attracted more than you, your own character. They will be attracted to your wealth, attracted to your position. That's understandable. That's, that's how it is. The thing is, the more you have to be guarded, the more they worry and stuff like that. I'm not saying that oh you shouldn't uh, deny it or anything. It's just it comes in one package. You know what plus it comes with minus. All right. Every plus has its minus. Every minus has its plus. All right. And um, and 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 if you stop playing this game, calculating, and turn around and say now I I want to move out, and now I need to liberate myself from this. Uh, endless spiral endless tail chasing game now I want to help other people to ha- out to get out of this tail chasing game and you share whatever you have whatever stage you are in this ladder climbing and you're like okay I have awakened to this you know, I've been through all this I fully understand the importance of awakening I, I have played enough of this game called life now I need to start to use whatever energy I have earnestly actually invest in you know invest right actually invest in cultivating um, a higher faculty a higher understanding but it takes a lot of um, effort and courage I let go of what I don't need previously thing is important you know maybe that social gathering that happens every Friday or Tuesday I think is very important I need to be there now I can just say it's fine and I'll actually spend my time you know really maybe share about this or actually um, focusing on chanting or uh, actually focusing on practicing meditation or actually you know build up a group where you invoke inspire people to also liberate themselves that's body heart all right you can have social same same thing but the context is different Instead of talking about my wife, your wife, or my husband, your husband, gossiping about that uh, third uh, cousins of yours or that boss, uh, uh, what he did, what she did, or oh, how I think is this, how I think is that, all this blah blah, you shift the whole attention of the gathering, uh, other than the basic social stuff, is towards enlightenment, towards actually pick the brain, you know, actually level up a bit. Everyone actually have a proper conversation, intellectual conversation. Talks about big stuff. Talks about subjects, or uh, maybe talks about uh, prospects. You know, in their work and career. That's another level. And then now we talk about actually practicing towards enlightenment. All right. Be careful though. If we just talk about enlightenment and we still behave as before, it just talks. But if we're actually sharing what we actually have gone through, and like like now like you know going through this, and and on what is your outlook on this? What do you think you are, where you are, and how how do you think you like to uh, uh, help yourself more in improving your um, confidence and faith, singen, uh, huigen, all right, your wisdom and your faith in this path, and then they actually give you the advice. You actually use it and do it. That's the kind of conversation we would love to have, right? For your career, you also think about you know how to improve your skill set. You know, say Jane is an OT occupation therapist. She needs to improve her career, her skill to take care of others, all right? And Maggie is a manager of a team, and she needs to improve the skills of how to communicate, or maybe improve the skills of her uh, whatever. And myself, I need to improve my skills to actually understand what my boss is talking about because I don't understand a lot of things they're talking about. Uh, because I'm actually in, have no idea until I join the team, so those things are also very good, you know, better than gossiping. All right, my auntie also improve his, her skill. Like you know, now I can use five apps at once, and you know, I can photo editing and all that. So those are right things, you know. They are not not like they're wrong, but you know, what is right or what is wrong. All right, if you awaken, all right. Um, Everything you do will be tuned to the right one. If you, if you're focusing too much and attached, like non awakened, what is not awakened? You attach, you obsess, too obsessed with something, uh, um, um, caught up in something, and and not able to get out of it. Then, whatever you do, 
right? No matter how much you justify it, will go towards the wrong because you might do things to the extreme against moderation, against zhong dao, right? Losing yourself in the process, losing yourself in the sense of losing your awakening, awareness, all right? Uh, and 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 go go further down, all right. So yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah yeah yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to talk. We can talk about that next time because master really extended. So before I end this, I don't want to just end it with me. Well, I actually did blab for one hour plus. So do you guys have anything else um to share in regard to what I said, what I share from from the master chingun's talk? About what is right and what is wrong, or how you, if you guys have any issues in your career or in your life, where you sometimes think this is how it should be, and then things happens, it challenge you. And it's like, oh, maybe not. Hmm. Anyone? By the way, Maggie, welcome. Sorry, I was in the middle of it. Didn't manage to say hi. Yeah. All right. So, summary. We do not want to.、Um, Confused, be confused. We want to be clear, and to be clear, we need to be aware of、uh, ourselves and、uh, our, what is the re- what 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 it really is. You know what is what it really is, and then from there we understand how how we apply this value system、uh, in regards to what is right and wrong. If you have no longer attached to self, the, then you no longer have that kind of、um, issues with. Bribery or anything, because you know that the consequence is too heavy、uh, to do that. Or in terms of sexual misconduct, you don't, you will never do that because there's no point. The pain and suffering that it brings against five minutes of pleasure is stupid,、um, no matter how pleasurable it is at the moment. So this kind of thing is very important, and you know, it takes uh, uh, this kind of talk and a lot of this kind of talk to get ourselves awakened. And you can bring it to your own people, friends as well. Family. All right, so I'll end it here.、Um, I'll see you guys next fortnight. We will be Tuesday next fortnight.、Uh, thank you for、uh, coming. We'll end this with ten times Amitabha for dedication of merits. Amitabha. 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 A mi to fo, 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 a mi to fo. May the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the suffering of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by our enlightened mind, vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ami Tofo. Thank you, everyone. Kalantaja. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Maggie.